Hey golfers, Will here, golf psychologist. Today I'm gonna to be giving you part three of my mental game series on mental toughness. Let's get started. Okay, so why should you pay attention to this? Well, the mental game is huge in golf. It's huge, and as a sports psychologist, I help athletes, and when I help my golfers, I am so involved with them in the mental game when I'm even out on the range. Trying to play mental games with them, trying to get them to use their brain to stretch and exercise their mental capacity. And part three of mental toughness is on the success mindset. You have a determination to achieve the success that you desire. And this can be a very powerful thing if you channel the motivational part of your brain into doing something that you are really passionate about and you just willing to do whatever it takes, that's mental toughness. But I don't find it too often. What I find is people want a quick fix, they want a shortcut and there really aren't any shortcuts I can show you a drill or show you something that explains a concept and that's helpful but you have to go out and do the work in golf half the battle is knowing what you have to do if it's a guessing game and you're trying to make it up as you go along you're wasting a lot of time and energy or you're developing bad habits. So people just firing balls thinking that's gonna make them better, it doesn't work. In fact, a lot of the guys and gals that come to me for golf lessons, um, I kinda have to work on them for a little while to even come and see me. They'll say things to me like, well, I wanna get some lessons, but I'm not ready yet. I'm gonna practice some more. And I don't wanna offend them, but at some point I, I, I say it's better to spend the money on a lesson than it is to spend money hitting balls and developing the wrong things because all you're doing is ingraining the bad patterns so it's kind of like a 50 50 thing 50 percent is knowing what you should do and having a, a course of action on how to do that and then the other 50 percent is having the will to actually do what it takes to accomplish that so I'll give you an example I'm out here on the range and for a lot of my career I had a real problem with a little hitch at the top of my swing where I would move my wrist a certain way that shut the face down and uh, it just wasn't good for where I wanted to take things and for the people that know me or have been around me for a long time they know that I'm a player first, that I approach golf first as a player because I started out as a player in high school and college and played mini tours out in California and then took a, a hiatus to go in a different direction with my career and now I'm back in the golf business and also in the psychology field. So what what that journey taught me was that in the little hitch that I had, I had to put in the time to correct that. First, I needed to know how to correct it. I needed to understand the, the method to correcting it. And then I just had to put in the time. And so it's kind of that 50-50 balance with this part three of success mindset. You gotta be able to know what it is you're trying to do and how to accomplish it, then you gotta be willing to put in the work. And like I said, most people aren't willing to put in the work. But what I have found is that most of the problem is in that first 50%. They don't know what to do. They're maybe willing to put in the work, but they're doing the wrong things and they're getting so frustrated that they're just burnt out. So I would tell you, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, one option is to schedule a virtual golf lesson with me. Send me a video of your swing from 
down the line, hitting a ball, and a, a swing with you standing like this, face on and hitting a ball. That's all you gotta do. Maybe 10 seconds each, send me an email, and I'll analyze your swing and get back to you with a process of what you need to do to improve what I would say is the, the main thing that you need to work on in order to accomplish your goals. And then we can stay in touch and keep moving forward. Or go to another teacher and have them analyze your swing. Somebody that you trust that can really help you. Just give you an example of some of the things that I had to do to correct that problem. So my issue was when I got to the top of my swing, I would do a little bit of a of a move with my wrist where I would move the club head in a way that shut it down. So then because it shut down, my body had to do something different in order to control the weight of that club. So this is one of the drills I had to do literally for hours and hours and hours. I had to position my feet in such a way where I would put my trail foot on the instep of my lead foot just to lock my body out of it and to force myself to work on the hands. Then I would basically just go through this motion of getting to the top of my swing and pushing my knuckles up to make sure that they didn't go down because that's what I was running into. And I would get to the top of my swing, knuckles up, down, hit a ball. Top of my swing, knuckles up, hit a ball. Now, this may not be your issue because a lot of people are the exact opposite of me. Their issue is they're coming over the top and they need to flatten or shallow that club head a little bit. Again, everybody's different. This was my issue. So this is the drill I got really used to doing. That little drill right there. I had to do it for hours and hours and hours, but it was a combination of having a success mindset and a success course of action of how I was going to accomplish that. And that's point number three is all about. So definitely take it to heart and put it into practice. And if you need some help, go to my website, findyourpeakperformance.com and get in touch with me and I'll be glad to uh, help you in that process. Good luck, we'll see you next time.